everybody, Flint from Flint and Steel Survival bringing this video today on a package I just received from a gentleman named Travis Gallagher at Locust Armory. Um, I really wanted to show this off. He and I have kind of started a little agreement where he's going to send me a couple more knives. I actually purchased everything you see here. He's going to send me two more knives to actually test and do reviews on. Uh, he's just trying to get some feedback. He's newer on the scene, I think. Uh, but he's already got some really good features, like he's doing certificates of authenticity. So the blade here, this guy I'm about to show you, is 8670 high carbon with a Rockwell of 59, stonewash finish, and it's a one of one, so it's a one off, which is always cool to me. The battle shroud, which I believe he's going to start including one with every knife, that's why it's on the certificate. I got the Jack Skellington pattern. If any of you guys know me, I'm a huge Halloween fan. And I absolutely love Nightmare Before Christmas. We went and saw it at the Symphony this year, me and my wife. So it was the Nightmare Before Christmas with the Symphony playing all the songs. It was really cool. So I would recommend it. But here's a scan of my certificate of authenticity. And on the back is his little logo. Locust Armory. And it has like a Fallout style dude. With the knife in his hand and some scientist goggles and... Uh, coat. Put that off to the side and let's show you this blade. So, as you can see, still got a little bit of oil on it. Um, it had some oil on it that kind of locked it into the sheath. So I cleaned it up and put some just REM oil on it to keep it safe because it is high carbon. And it has been kind of moist here in Utah. But there's the logo. It's got one on the reverse side on the grind. I like how it has the three holes in the handle. You can put a wicked lanyard off of it. Plus you have enough that if you wanted to do scales, you could do some scales here. I'm thinking about one day doing some thin G10. But I don't know. This is a nice thick blade. Probably over a quarter inch. Um, maybe a three eighths, I would guess. Let me pull out the calipers. Alright. Oh, I was way off. One six, one seven. So it's not quite a quarter of an inch. Looks can be deceiving. Probably because it's such a small knife. I really was thinking that it was going to be a little bit thicker than that, but perfect for a neck knife. Really nice weight. Um, I don't know how many ounces exactly. I don't want to run upstairs and get the scale. But there is one thing I noticed, and at first it kind of took me as weird. Let me sit down. So, if you look, you've got a really sharp edge all the way up to about here. And then if I can catch it on camera for you. There we go. So you can see how it's flat right there, right? There's no edge here to speak of whatsoever. I'm pushing as hard as I can. No cut. But I realize what it is is to strengthen the tip. Um, on a knife like this, if you had this sharp edge all the way up to the tip, you would risk breaking it off for puncturing. But this actually makes it so you've got this really nice, wicked, sharp tip to stab into stuff. Um, that's really cool. At first I'm like, did he not finish the grind? But it makes complete sense now that I think about it. I didn't ask him, so I, I'm just assuming here that that's the use. But it actually makes a world of difference for puncturing. Because then you're not going to worry about chipping your blade if you're stabbing into stuff. Um, and I really like the sheath. In full transparency, I put the uh, belt clip back on to see what I got. You can see Scout Carry. It's got this really nice clip. It holds really well on my belt. Um, it doesn't hold so well on my leather belt because of this spot right here. It's a little too thin, but my like normal old EDC belt works just fine. But what I did is I took the screws out and was neck carrying this guy. It worked perfectly for me. I'm thinking now about doing like a under the shoulder kind of style rig where you just take a big piece of paracord, wrap it around your back, kind of like a shoulder rig for a gun. The single shoulder rigs that have the one strap down, that's what I'm going to probably do with this in paracord. I think it's going to work out pretty sweet and that will give me a defensive option without having it anywhere conspicuous. Then let's talk about this guy. This is something he threw in. 
I also has two holes if I want to put scales on it, but two sided, so black on this side, orange on this side. It's obviously stacked G10, but it turned out really wicked cool. And this thing is razor sharp for plastic. In fact, let's see if I can do a cut test with it. I've not tried this before, so it might work, it might not. You know, that's pretty good for plastic. But you guys all know what something like this is going to be used for. This will get past a metal detector. Um, you make it a leather sheath with just some stitching and no metal. This will go right through. So this can be your defensive option past metal detectors. Then you've got Jack Skellington, like I said, Oogie Boogie. And that's got this really sweet uh, embroidery of the logo LA on the back side in just a flat black absolutely love it so I'm really enjoying this setup I'm really glad I bought it and I look forward to showing you the other stuff he's gonna send he's gonna send me a bushcraft blade and one that's brand new to him that he just barely started making so I'm kind of excited to see those and uh, I'll let you know when I get them and you'll be the first ones to know what I think so thanks for watching everybody I appreciate it I will try to do some like actual EDC work I'll try to put together a video soon of this it's going to be an EDC knife though, so it's not like you want to go out there and chop through a tree or anything. But I'll try to throw together like a worst case scenario EDC knife video. Just to kind of show you what it could go through on a regular day. Thanks for watching guys, I appreciate it. Bye.